The next thing that the TA does um, is he introduces the pretest, right? Do you know of any ways that the TA could introduce the pretest so that you know it doesn't trigger quite so much as so much anxiety as it seemed to trigger when when he was introducing the pretest right so so the way he sets up the um the pretest about saying now if you you have have to essentially get 80 percent to really plan to do well in this class that the that doing well on the pretest is going to be diagnostic of how you do uh, in the class even before they've learned anything um, can activate what, what I mentioned earlier, something called stereotype threat. And this is um, a phenomenon that people have studied, particularly um, Claude Steele and Joshua Aronson in the mid-90s. Um, so this is the idea that people from communities, particularly white women and women and men of color, who know that they're stereotyped as not being good at science or mathematics, they hear this um, as an indicator that they really shouldn't be there. Um, and the threat is saying that someone's performance on a test is diagnostic of their ability. And this can be also activated by something as small as asking someone to indicate their gender or race on a form before starting the test. That activates the stereotype threat. And the, the result from this stereotype threat is that white women and women of men of color will systematically do poorly um, compared to their majority peers um, on any kind of sort of test. So, if, we, if you're going to go about doing the pretest, about trying to figure out where your, your students are in your class, I think that's a great idea. Um, just so that you can figure out how to tail your, tailor your own material. Um, but if you're going to then frame it as, you know, you should consider not taking this class if you get less than this 80%, talk about that after they've taken the test so that that doesn't act... Um, actively activate their their concerns about how they're going to be judged. You might even just talk about it with the individuals who do do poorly and that can be a one-on-one -on -one conversation that doesn't need to be something that sets up the entire test. Okay, okay. And I think that, so now that I think more about this and what we've been saying about stereotype threat and the, the diagnostic way that he framed uh, the pretest, that also makes me think about something that I've heard of called uh, growth mindset. Um, so is the way he um, sets up the test also kind of playing into uh, growth mindset? Can you say a little bit more about what that is? And also, you know, how can instructors help students develop a, a, a positive growth mindset? Right. So this is the work based on Carol Dweck, um, and she's a uh, psychologist at Stanford, I believe. And she talks about either a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. And a fixed mindset is the idea that you are a math person or you are a physics person, um, and that if you are in fact not a physics person, you're not gonna do well in physics. That's the fixed mindset, and that's one of the concerns about sort of framing mathematics as something that people are good at. Um, in contrast, a growth mindset is the idea that you can learn. You can learn to do mathematics well. You can learn to do physics well. That it's not, you aren't sort of set um, with your the extent of your abilities as soon as you're born or as soon as you start high school or whatever that is. You can develop those and really that's what education is actually about, right? So, um, ta so for example, one of the things that I think is interesting about this pretest is if it is about trying to understand where students are with the respect to the material and a, and a sort of diagnostic level of whether they're going to do well is 80%, that means 80% of the material they already have to be familiar with. So that doesn't actually give you a lot of necessarily spread above the 80% to the 100% to actually figure out where students are with respect to the material. So, you know, you can design the pretest itself to be within the context of a growth mindset, not trying to figure out, you know, where everyone is as though this is the end point for them, but where are the different places that you might, as an instructor, might be able to help them? What are the misconceptions that you see? What are the um, regular problems that you see based on your experience teaching this, this class in the past that then you can help bolster through your teaching to help these students be successful? So designing your assessment strategy can be set up through a growth mindset as opposed to a fixed mindset. Framing this as an opportunity to learn and not as something to sort of figure out whether you're in the right box. Um, I think all of those things can help um, move students into a growth mindset. You know, one of the physics instructors who had um, a, a large degree of influence on me 
uh, one of the things that he said, um, you know, was, you know, when I took this class, you know, I found it very tough and challenging and difficult. You know, things didn't come, you know, naturally to me. But, you know, I, I worked hard. I was patient with myself. I remained determined. And, you know, eventually I understood the material. Sure. And, and that's something I do with my students, too. Usually after their first exam, I talk about how um, we, we sort of do a little assessment about how well they think they did. Um, and then I talk about how I, in my, I'm sharing this with the world now, in my partial differential equations uh, class, I was doing fine in the class and um, I was getting an A in the midterm and, and the, all the assignments and so forth. And then I failed the final exam, which was worth 60% of my final grade. And I know, right? Not that I'm upset about this still, you know, like 20 years later. Uh, but the point is that you can recover from these things too, right? So even if you do do poorly on a particular assist, uh, assessment, that doesn't, it shouldn't um, uh, doom you to a life of mediocrity in math that you can have bad days and you can recover from them and you can still become, you know, a, an engineer or a professor or whatever it is. So I, I, uh, I save that, that super exciting and motivating story until after the end of my student's first test. <laughs> cool. Well, well, great point um, and, and great story. I think that that would uh, uh, help help a lot of students. Um, feel better about, you know, their opportunity to, to learn and grow in the class. Mm -hmm.